Last Sunday, when Jesus was teaching the disciples, he put a child right in their midst and said, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Now, in the Gospel of Mark especially, you often get the impression that the disciples have no idea that Jesus is talking to them. And just after Jesus said that, after he finished teaching them, John came and said, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. We saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him. These guys are a little slow. Jesus said, do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. Now, it's true that at another time in the gospel, Jesus says the opposite of that. Whoever is not with us is against us. But here, he makes a very broad, inclusive statement. Whoever is not against us is for us. We heard that same sense in the reading today from the book of Numbers. Uh, Moses had been complaining to God uh, that he was overworked, listening to the the concerns of all the children of Israel. They wanted food, water, they wanted so much. He said, I can't do all this alone. God said, pick 70 elders and, and I will put my spirit on them. They can help in the administrative duties. But it turns out that even though Eldad and Medad were on the list, they didn't go to the meeting tent. So really what happened, they skipped church. And as far as Joshua was concerned, if you don't go to church, you don't get to prophesy. Now, I'm always a little bit hesitant reading this story from the book of Numbers when the teenagers are present. Because if they get the idea that you don't have to go to church to prophesy, there'll be no end to their testing. But this is really a test for Moses. What kind of a leader is he? Will Moses be threatened by this illicit activity, even though it seems to be authorized by God's Spirit? So Moses goes beyond Eldad and Medad, Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Surely that's the sense, I think, that Pope Francis had in his visit to us this week. He spoke as a Catholic pope, and yet he spoke a message that includes everybody in this country. The pope gave two talks on Thursday, One before Congress and afterward when he went to have lunch with the homeless in Washington, D.C. In the first talk, he used words. But the second talk, his actions spoke volumes. In his talk before Congress, Pope Francis spoke to the whole country and reminded us who we are. We, the people of this continent are not fearful of foreigners because most of us were once foreigners ourselves. I say this to you as the son of immigrants, knowing that so many of you are also descended from immigrants. We must not be taken aback by their numbers, but rather view them as persons, seeing their faces and listening to their stories trying to respond as best we can to their situation. We need to avoid a common temptation nowadays to discard whatever proves troublesome. Let us remember the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This rule points us in a clear direction, the Pope said. Let us treat others with the same passion and compassion with which we want to be treated. Let us seek for others the same possibilities which we seek for ourselves. Let us help others to grow 
as we would like to be helped ourselves in a word. If we want security, let us give security. If we want life, let us give life. If we want opportunities, let us provide opportunities. The yardstick we use for others will be the yardstick which time will use for us. The golden rule also reminds us of our responsibility to protect and defend human life at every stage of its development. Like Jesus and Moses, a good leader helps us to understand where God is present and working in our midst. So Pope Francis lifted up four great Americans, three sons and a daughter of this land, four individuals and four dreams that helped shape the American experience. Abraham Lincoln, liberty. Martin Luther King Jr., liberty and plurality and non-exclusion. Dorothy Day, social justice and the rights of persons. And Thomas Merton, the capacity for dialogue and openness to God. Certainly Abraham Lincoln and Martin Luther King Jr. are familiar to us, but even those of us familiar with Dorothy Day and Thomas Merton were surprised to hear these two Roman Catholics praised in the halls of Congress. Radical activist Dorothy Day, who created the Catholic worker movement on behalf of the poor and the powerless, and Thomas Merton, a reclusive monk drawn to the life of a hermit who paradoxically also lived a life of political engagement and religious dialogue. Interestingly, both Dorothy Day and Thomas Merton were converts to Catholicism. Both lived rather messy lives before they became Catholic and after they converted. They were simply, like all of us, both saints and sinners. Martin Luther King Jr. in his speech, The Drum Major Instinct, given in Atlanta, February 4th, 1968, just two months before he died, gives us a way to understand what Pope Francis was teaching after he addressed Congress and went to lunch with the poor and the homeless. King said this, If you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be recognized, wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize that the one who is greatest among you shall be your servant. That's a new definition of greatness. And by giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know Einstein's theory of relativity to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamics and physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love, and you can be that servant. So who is authorized then to serve? And how do you get chosen? The Lopez family, you might recognize them. They were members of our parish for quite a few years, uh, recently moved to Cranberry, Pennsylvania, Alejandro and Lorena and their two children. Well, their son, Alex, dressed up for a school project recently, uh, like Pope Francis. You can see the likeness there. And so they wrote to the Vatican and Yesterday, Alex and his family got to present this cross at this gathering of the immigrant families in Philadelphia. So that's one way to get chosen, dress up like the Pope. (laughs) But in his homily Saturday morning in Philadelphia, Pope Francis suggested another way. Francis pointed to St. Catherine Drexel, one of the great saints raised up by the local church in Philadelphia. So when Catherine spoke to Pope Leo XIII of the needs of the missions, the Pope, and here Francis remarked, he was a very wise Pope, asked her pointedly, what about you? 
What are you going to do? These words, Francis said, changed Catherine's life because they reminded her that in the end, every Christian, man and woman, by virtue of baptism, has received a mission. Each one of us has to respond as best we can to the Lord's call to build up his body, the church.